today we are going to discuss integral cycle control of ac voltage controllers ac voltage controllers changes the voltage level of ac signal and it does not change the frequency so ac voltage controllers are basically power converter circuits which changes the voltage level of ac signal so the output of ac voltage controller will be different than its input and what will change only the voltage level of the ac signal but there will be no change of frequency in the signal so the input frequency and the output frequency will be same ac voltage controllers find application in industrial heating speed control of ac drives lighting control etc there are two control strategies of ac voltage controllers integral cycle control which is also known as on off control and phase control in this video we are going to discuss about integral cycle control or the on off control of ac voltage controllers in this method what we do we connect the load to the supply for say n cycles and then for next m cycles we disconnect the load from the supply so for n cycles the load is connected to the supply for m cycles load will be disconnected from the supply so we are disconnecting the load from supply should it affect the output it should not if the applications have large time constant so it can be used the integral cycle control strategy of ac voltage controllers can be used only in application where time constant is large simple example will be heating furnaces because disconnection of supply for few cycles in such application produces no appreciable change in output in heating furnaces heat is a slow process so the time constant is large if we disconnect the supply for few cycles the temperature will not go down by that much or even in high speed machines if we disconnect the motor for few cycles the speed will not go down appreciably so we can use this method but the catch is we can uh, perform integral cycle control of ac voltage controllers only when the time constant of that process or that application is large so in integral cycle control as we said we'll connect the supply for few cycles and disconnect the cycle uh, load for few cycles so the waveform looks like this the, in blue color it is a supply voltage or the line voltage so there are 12 cycles of supply shown in this figure this is just for representation with an example where we are connecting the load to the supply for five cycles and disconnecting the supply for two cycles therefore there will be output voltage v naught equal to vs for five cycles and this duration in this duration the devices will be on and in this duration there will be no output as the devices will be off we also define duty cycle k which is a ratio of the total on time upon total time of output cycle so the output cycle comprises of 5 plus 2 that is 7 cycles and it is on for 5 cycles so duty cycle for this case for this example will be 5 by 7 in general duty cycle k is equal to n upon n plus m n is the number of cycles for which the load is connected to the supply and m is the number of cycles for which the load is disconnected from the supply we can have a very simple circuit to obtain integral cycle control there are two thyristors t1 and t2 in anti parallel through which the load is connected to the source so in positive half cycle thyristor t1 will be activated and current will flow from upper terminal of the source through t1 to the 
positive terminal on the low. So output voltage and current will be positive. In the negative half cycle, thyristor T2 will be fired. Therefore, current will flow from the lower terminal of the source. It will go to the negative terminal load and go back to the source through thyristor T2. So alternatively, we will fire thyristor T1 and T2. For positive half cycle, thyristor T1 will be fired. For negative half cycles, thyristor T2 will be fired. So we can have as many numbers of cycles in output as required. For example, in this case, n is equal to 5. So output will be obtained for 5 cycles. And alternatively, thyristor T1 and T2 will be fired. T1, T2, T1, T2, T1, T2, T1, T2, T1, T2, T1, T2, T1 and T2. For next two cycles, we can keep the supply off. So this is integral cycle control of AC voltage controllers. And we can see if we uh, consider these seven cycles of supply, the output voltage will be different from that of the supply voltage because in total seven cycles of the supply, only five cycles of the output are available. Therefore, output voltage will be different than the supply voltage. So there is a change in the voltage of the AC signal, but there is no change in the frequency. You can see the frequency of output signal is same as the frequency of input signal. Now we are interested in calculating various parameters for integral cycle control of AC voltage controllers. The first parameter will be calculating the RMS voltage of output, RMS value of output voltage. So it is N upon N plus M, the duty cycle into 1 by 2 0 to 2 pi Vs square d omega t where Vs is equal to Vm sin omega t. Vs is the supply voltage which can be given as Vm which is the maximum value of the sinusoidal voltage into sin omega t. RMS value of one cycle, one cycle of supply can be given as 1 by 2 because it is available for 2 pi radians one complete cycle 1 by 2 pi 0 to 2 pi Vs square d omega 2 under root but we have to obtain the value of output RMS for 5 plus 2 cycles therefore we have to multiply this with a factor which is n by n plus m because there are total 7 cycles of supply available out of which 5 cycles of output is available so the factor of periodicity will become n upon n plus m because output is available for n cycles out of n plus m cycles of input again keep in mind that output is available for n number of cycles out of n plus m number of cycles of input so this is how we calculate the rms value of output voltage now putting the value of Vs which is equal to Vm sin omega t, the equation will become like this. n by nm 1 upon 2 pi 0 to 2 pi Vm sin omega t ka whole square d omega t and whole to the power 1 by 2. Next. So this is the equation from last slide. Now. We can take this Vm out of the integration because it is not dependent on omega t. So it will be Vm square and under the integration we have sin omega 2 whole square. Sin omega t can be sin omega t whole square is equal to 1 minus cos omega t by 2. So our equation becomes VOR the RMS voltage output voltage is n by n plus m Vm square. 1 upon 2 pi 0 to 2 pi under the bracket 1 minus cos omega t by 2 d omega t and whole to the power 1 by root 2. So we know the integration of this part come out to be pi. So pi will be cancelled out by pi and we will have 1 by 2 here vm square n upon n plus m. This n upon n plus m is nothing but duty cycle k. So it can be written as k vm square will be written as it is and when we solve this integration the output of this integration will be 1 by 2 so it is whole to the power 1 by 2 so 
RMS output voltage becomes root k times of Vm upon root 2. And Vm upon root 2 can be written as Vs. Capital Vs is the RMS value of the supply. It is different than small Vs, which is Vs is equal to Vm sin omega t. Small Vs is equal to Vm sin omega t. That is the instantaneous value of the AC signal, input AC signal. And this is the RMS value of the AC signal. So RMS output voltage is equal to root k times the RMS supply voltage, where root k is the duty cycle. We are now interested in finding some other parameters for this circuit. Uh, we have just calculated that RMS output voltage is root k times the RMS supply voltage. RMS load current or the RMS output current will be output voltage RMS divided by resistance. So the RMS load current becomes root k times Vs upon R. Output power P0 can be uh, find out as RMS output voltage whole square to the power R. So it becomes K V A square by R. Obviously, as we can uh, recall from the circuit, the RMS input current will be exactly equal to RMS load current. So remember these formulas. This is RMS output voltage, RMS load current or the RMS output current, output power and RMS input current. So these are the few values that we have find out for this circuit. Next, we find out the input VA. The input VA power to this circuit will be Vs into Is, V source into I source or V supply into I supply. And we know that RMS input current is equal to RMS load current. So it becomes Vs into IOR. Now IOR is the RMS load current which is in turn equal to RMS voltage upon resistance. So input VA becomes Vs into VOR upon R. So it is the input voltage RMS into output voltage RMS upon resistance. Next we find we know that uh, input VA multiplied with input power factor it gives input power. Input VA multiplied by input power factor gives input power and in case of negligible losses it becomes equal to output power. From this equation we can find out input power factor. So input power factor will be output power upon input VA. Output power given from this equation is RMS output voltage square upon resistance VOR square upon R and input VA we have just find out Vs into VOR upon R. So R gets cancelled out by R, VOR square cancelled out by VOR so one VOR is left in the numerator and in the denominator we have Vs. Again recall this RMS output voltage equation where RMS output voltage is equal to root k times the RMS supply voltage. From here RMS output voltage upon RMS supply voltage becomes root k. So input power factor becomes root k where k is the duty cycle. So, so far we have found uh, uh, find these parameters. RMS output voltage, output power, RMS load current, RMS input current, input VA and input power factor. Now we are interested in some other parameters which is which are the thyristor currents both average value and RMS value. We can have a look on this output voltage waveform of AC voltage controller for integral cycle control. You can see that one set of thyristor will be working for only pi radius. For this complete cycle, thyristors T1 and T2 will work out of which T1 will work for only positive supply. So whenever positive supply is there, T1 will be active. Whenever negative supply is there, T2 will be active. So for one cycle of input, that is for 2 pi radius, for 0 to pi radius, T1 will be active. For next negative half cycle from pi to 2 pi radians thyristor t2 will be active so if we take 
uh, one of the thyristor it will be active for pi radians for 2 pi radians of the supply therefore we can have the average thyristor current as 1 upon 2 pi 0 to pi i m sin omega t d omega t why 0 to pi because one of the thyristor is active only for pi radians out of 2 pi radians of the supply thyristor is active for pi radians only for 2 pi radians of input so this part 1 upon 2 pi 0 to pi i m sin omega t d omega t it constitutes for only one cycle of the output if we want to find average thyristor current we have to take care of the whole period of the output and therefore we multiply this with duty cycle n, uh, n upon n plus m because out of n plus m cycles of input input is available output is available for n cycles therefore this is the formula for average thyristor current when we solve this part we get answer as 2 so 2 will get cancelled out by 2 here this is duty cycle k so it becomes average thyristor current becomes k times i m upon pi where i m is nothing it is the root 2 times of rms output current similarly we can find out rms thyristor current which is same as average thyristor current with the formula that we have to square the value of instantaneous thyristor current which is im sin omega 2 it will be squared and whole factor will be uh, raised to the power 1 by 2 again when we integrate this part im sin omega t square 2 in the limit 0 to pi the answer will be pi so after calculation of this integration rms thyristor current will become root k times of i m upon 2 i m is the maximum value of output current which is root 2 times the rms value of output current so to summarize integral cycle control means that load will be connected to the supply for few cycles and for next few cycles it will be disconnected from the supply the voltage waveform will be as shown if there are uh, if these are the input cycles these are the output voltage waveform for an example we have shown that for five cycles output is available that is thyristors are on supply is connected for two cycles thyristors are off load is disconnected from the supply so in this way we can define a duty cycle k which is n upon n upon n plus m that is total number of cycles for which output is available divided by total number of cycles for which input is available this is the simple diagram of a uh, circuit diagram of integral cycle control of ac voltage controllers where two thyristors are in anti parallel whenever supply is positive thyristor t1 is fired whenever supply is negative thyristor t2 is fired whenever supply is positive and thyristor t1 is fired output voltage and current will be positive similarly when out supply is negative and thyristor t2 is fired output voltage and current will be negative these are few parameters of interest for this circuit rms output voltage output power rms load current rms input current input va input power factor average thyristor current and RMS thyristor current. That's all for this video. Thank you.